Hi friends and welcome to our time together on this Sunday the 9th of May, the 6th Sunday of Easter as we continue our journey towards the next major milestone in the Christian calendar which is of course Pentecost. There are a few intimations to share with you. First of all, the live services are continuing in, in the, the churches. Can I remind you that we have worship at OG8 at Old Guru Ashton at 10 o'clock, then 11.15 at Lylekirk, and then 11.30 for St Ninians at Old Guru Ashton. This Sunday there will be a communion and it will be live streamed from Old Guru Ashton from 10 o'clock. Next Sunday for Lyle Kirk, the service will continue at 11.15. However, it will be obviously with your new minister, the Reverend Jonathan Fleming, who will be inducted by the Presbytery of Clyde on Tuesday coming. That's Tuesday the 11th of May. Also this week, we are putting out, uh, putting out uh, envelopes for Christian Aid. They'll be available at all the churches for um, Christian Aid from this week. And we're asking you to bring them back and return them um, from the next three Sundays, so the last three Sundays in May. So that'll be Sunday the 16th, 23rd and 30th of May. If you'd like to bring a donation to Christian Aid, the envelopes are available to take with you today at the churches and you can bring them back. If you don't have a Christian Aid envelope but would still like to give to Christian Aid, then please just put your donation marked Christian Aid in an envelope and hand it in at the church or give it to your representative elder. These are all the intimations. Just to just to uh, say though that at the churches, it should be we should note that there's been a significant change in that the the numbers can who can share in the services have changed quite considerably. The capacity at Old Guru Ashton is now 120. So if you would still like to have a seat at Old Guru Ashton, you still need to contact um, Jim Hempsey uh, in the usual way for St Ninians, Jeanette, and of course. For Lyle Kirk, you need to contact Ross. You need to contact the session clerk in the same way, but the capacity is increasing. However, at the minute, there is still no singing, as that is still one of the things that we're unable to do. These are all the intimations. Let us come before God as we always do with our gathering song, which is Welcome Everybody. It's good to see you here. We sing together. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here, gathering in this place. You are indeed most welcome as we share in this short time of worship and praise together. Let us come before God the reading of his word. Now, over the last few Sundays after Easter, we've been reading through the narratives of Jesus' post resurrection appearances and now we're thinking about Jesus and the long-term relationship that we have. We started reading last week from John chapter 15 in the, where Jesus describes himself as the vine and we're going to read more about that in a minute but first we turn to the scriptures of the Old Testament and we read from Psalm 98. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song for he's done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst with jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people with equity. In these words, the psalmist is exuberant, joyous. Shout to the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. Now, it's quite ironic reading these words when we're unable to sing together in our churches. But it is about the relationship that people have with God, that partnership with God. 
and remembering that partnership is still real to God, that the psalmist is reminding the people, this is why you should be joyful. This is why you should sing a new song, because you are still the people, the children of God. Shout for joy, the awe to the Lord, all the earth, burst into jubilant song with music. We may not be able to sing just now, but we can still give praise and thanks to God in so many other ways. Let us turn now to read from John's Gospel at chapter 15 and verses 9 to 17. Verses 9 to 17, the continuation of the vine and the branches narrative of John's Gospel. John chapter 15 at verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No one, no longer, call, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. The whole purpose of the resurrection is to show how great God's love is for us, his children. And here is the great command given by Christ. Go and love one another. Again, in these words, Jesus is reminding us of the partnership that we share in with God. Amen and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word. Let us take a moment to come before God in our prayers. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray. The psalmist calls us to be jubilant, to be joyful. With all we've gone through, with all we've endured in the last months and year, it's difficult to see where their joy is. It's difficult to feel that sense of jubilation. And yet as we see the light at the end of the tunnel, as we see the possibilities before us so we rejoice and give thanks for through the darkness that we've journeyed through God has been with us through the difficult times God has been with us through the times of isolation and loneliness God has been with us in times of uncertainty and illness God has been with us and now we see the changes taking place in our society we see the restrictions that we've lived with lift, now being lifted gradually, piece by piece. And we thank God that we see the light at the end of the tunnel. So we sing a new song to you, Lord. We sing once more of jubilation and thanksgiving. We sing and praise in our hearts today and give you all praise and glory. For we come to share the reality of hope the hope of post-COVID world, the hope of new beginnings, the hope of rekindling relationships, of meeting together one with another again, the hope of going back to what we know and what we shared. And yet, Lord, we know things will be different. Nothing will be exactly the same as it was. For we've had a chance to stop and think, a chance to take stock, a chance to challenge ourselves, to see where we're going, to reassess what's important and to re recharge our batteries and our sense of value. Holy and loving God, through Jesus Christ, you give us the great command, love one another. We pray that that love may be evident in all we do and all we seek to be. We pray for that love to shine forth from the work and life of your church, from our lives as individual Christians, that people may see your love in us, see the joy that we know through you. For you are there in the darkness and you are there in the light. 
We come to give you praise and glory, Father, for you are the God of creation and the God of all life and love. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to share that love, that love that sets us free, that love that gives us hope, that love that comes into our lives and gives our lives meaning. We thank you for that love shown through Jesus, Jesus who died and rose again that we might live. Jesus who sets us free, that we might indeed lift up our hearts and sing a new song to God. For we are his children and he has called us to serve him. Father, we come before you recognising that you call us in our imperfection. You call us with our faults and feelings. You call us because of who we are, because we are imperfect, because we have these feelings. You call us not to be perfect, but to seek perfection through you, to seek that understanding of love. But we're never above you, never better than you, and never better than any one of our brothers and sisters. You, O Lord, through Jesus Christ, make us all equal, all your children. And so we come to praise you and thank you that you've called us to be part of your family and that you're willing to forgive our sins as we confess them before you. We bring before you the things we know we shouldn't have done, the things we wish we hadn't said. We bring before you missed opportunities. We bring before you the impurity of our own hearts. We confess our sins and we seek your forgiveness, your love. We seek your assurance that once more we are re-established in the path of righteousness. Once more that we can sing new songs to you. Once more that we live in your love. Lord, in the silence, hear the prayers of your people as we come before you to confess our sins and to give you thanks and praise for all that you've brought into our life. Lord, in the journey that is ahead, help us to sing a new song. Help us indeed to love one another. Amen. Both the reading from the Psalms and Jesus' narrative of being part of the vine and the branches, it is all about partnership with God, that we are part of God's family. We are part of the family of the church but more importantly, part of the Christian community that he has called us to witness his love and share that love one with another. Partnership. It's such an important word. Partnership that we see through, for example, when we are married and sharing our relationships. A partnership is about shared responsibilities, shared needs. And sometimes it's difficult. We get it wrong in our relationships. Because sometimes we expect more and are willing to give less. Of course, for partnerships, sometimes, sometimes there are words that strike fear into your very heart. I think when I was thinking about this, it really took me back to first and second year of high school. The end of the year for physical education was always a time known as, and I hate these words, social dancing. Social dancing was part of our PE experience where we were taught as boys and girls, young men and women, to dance. And so you would have the joy, I use the word advisedly, <laughs> of being in the gym hall and the, the PE teacher telling you these three words that brought great distress to me. Take your partner. It struck fear into me, still does, as a non-dancing Presbyterian. It would be sometimes the girls who would pick the boys. Sometimes the boys would pick the girls. When you knew in your year group who was going out with who, it was fine. But when you were the one who was always left till the end, who would choose you? Who would pick you? And then, of course, that sense of being together, the awkwardness, the shyness, the nervous laughter, the barely touching each other's hands almost by a finger. Take your partner struck fear into his in first and second year and of course it was preparing us for that torture that was known as the end of the year dance take your partner 
And yet, partnerships are vitally important. Where would I be without the partnership of Shona, my wife? Where would I be without the partnership that we share one with another in friendships and working together in the church? For the church, partnership is so important, seeing ourselves as being part of the community. When the church sees itself as not part of the community, but above the community, separate from the community because of its own self-righteousness, then it loses the very essence of what it means to be in partnership with God. Being in partnership with God is to enable all to sing the new song to God that the psalmist calls us to sing. And that partnership is achieved through sharing the most important thing that we have to share as a church. That understanding of God's love for us. That love manifest in Jesus Christ. That love manifest in the empty cross and the empty tomb. That love manifest in the power of the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. For us in the church, as we progress beyond the General Assembly that is coming up in the Church of Scotland, partnership is going to become more and more important for individual parishes as we see a continued not drop in the numbers of ministers available. Now, I know there's more of me to go around. However, there are less ministers in total, and so there'll be less parish churches. So we are going to have to seek partnership with different congregations. Here in our own area, down in Greenock and Guruk, it is the partnerships that have developed between Old Guruk and Ashton and St Ninians, between St Margaret's and St John's, between Westburn, between the Lyle Kirk, working closer together, working to try and shape the Church of Scotland in this area, that it may continue to share the good news of God's love, to continue to partner with others in that journey of love. So we think about how we work together and how we can share together and how together we can be the partners that God wants us to be. And it's all through this great command of God, given to Jesus Christ, love one another, to be inclusive, to be open, to be welcoming. Perhaps it's best summed up in these words, from the material from Spill the Beans today. Love is not a command, it is a way of being. Love is enabled by mutual respect and good, positive relationship. Jesus has chosen us. He has established friendship and partnership between God and humanity and calls all of humanity to adopt the ways of peace and love. Without adopting such an outlook of care, and promoting in our actions the values that go together with such friendship. The friendship is never fully complete, no matter God's unconditional love for us in Jesus. The circle of friendship is complete when we love God and God's Son by partnering with God in caring for the world and caring for its people. That's the thing. The partnerships that we need to share in are partnerships for the world. So I'd urge you, share in the work of Christian Aid in the next few weeks by giving what you can to enable its work to show that we are still in partnership with our brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they may be. Share in the partnerships locally that we can create and are still have created and still creating. Sharing the partnerships that you can create by sharing your faith, your love, one with another. Let us take a moment to come before God in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Lord of love, you call us to love all people in the way that you love us. Today we take a pause to recognise what your love for us looks like. It's like nothing else in our lives. So often we fail. So often we mess up. So often we get it wrong. And yet, Lord, you are there with unconditional love. Do we cherish this love that you extend to us? Do we really acknowledge it 
with the gratitude we should, we take time today, here in this place, here and wherever we are and whatever time we're sharing, in the here and now, we take time to know your love for us. Lord of love, we are now ready, ready to take what we know about our inclusion in your circle of love, that we can extend our vision outward and away from ourselves, focusing instead on the world around us, the people we live in community with and with the issues of the world itself. Father, we pray for those who feel excluded, left out, for those who find society a place where it is easy to feel excluded, to feel alone, to feel as though they're not worth anything. We pray for, for we pray and remember from what others might take for granted. We pray for those who are made to feel not just servants of others, at the beck and call of the people around them, but indeed slaves to powerful masters who create a real experience of fear and distress. Political masters, economic masters, employers and employees, whatever situation it is. Lord, we take time to know your love for them. We pray for those who feel unloved, because of knowing little human love in the journey of their lives and in the affirmation of their life. Those who feel rejected, discarded. We recognise how, how hard it is. It must be for some to have any genuine sense of being loved by you when they have been rejected and withheld love from so many. Father, we pray for all who feel that sense of desperation and that sense of isolation. We bring you to, to, to today all those who also feel in difficult times, those who are early at home or in hospital, those who endure the reality of bereavement and who feel isolated, cut off, forgotten about. We pray for all, Lord, who feel excluded from your love. We take time to know your love for them, that they are loved. Father, today across the world and running deep into our communities, may your love be more widely known and more broadly shared. Let such a peace envelop your people that any desire to exclude others will be a complete anathema to them for all who seek to welcome and befriend one another, that we may indeed be the welcoming, inclusive church that you want us to be, where all are welcome, and that together we share that vision of partnership with our brothers and sisters throughout the community that we seek to share in. Lord, hear these are prayers. And as a family now, we pray together, sharing in the words that Jesus himself taught us to share in partnership. So we say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lord, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This will be the last time that I share with you in these times together as the Lyle Kirk. And I thank you for being there with me in all our times together. God bless you as you share now in your new journey of ministry with, with um, Jonathan Fleming and all that lies ahead. Friends, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, we thank you for taking time to share and be with us today. Please stay safe and look after yourselves. Thank you for being you. We close with the benediction. May the blessing and peace of God 
be with you and in your heart this day and all whom you love and share your journey with. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon and dwell within your heart this day. Remain with you and all whom you love and share your story with now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace and thank you for being you.